What's happening? It's Distance, back with another tutorial. Um, for a while on Instagram and Facebook, I've been threatening to do a tutorial on Absinthe. And why do I want to do a tutorial on Absinthe? The reason is I just don't think people understand it, for one. Um, most of the tutorials online that I see are people using like Massive or Serum um silence all the kind of typical synths associated with edm and dance music and just modern production but i think everyone is missing out by not learning how to use absinthe um when you flip through the presets it's quite obvious it's very heavily kind of pad orientated or you know atmospheric stuff but you really can use this to make some terrorizing basses and like sub bass and percussion make some weird like sequenced rhythms um it's a sampler which is nuts like it's just insane and you can even record um even record like your patches as in like you can make a sound and then um bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, well, I might have to get something going before I can do that. But you can you can even record um, a sound you're making into Absinthe. It will then record that as a wave, and then you can bring that back in as a sample. So it's really really powerful. Um, this is going to be a super condensed, brief look at the synthesizer, and then I will do more tutorials going a bit deeper into um like the lfos into the sampler and things like that but i'm going to try and squeeze in as much as i can as possible right so here we go um so when you come in you can just put start new sound it'll always come with a, a sine wave you can that's the transpose we put it down an octave then you've got quite a solid sub bass okay now at the moment it's just a single waveform you can have a double so you can come over here where it says mod so this will i'm assuming will modulate the first waveform so there we are we have two waveforms playing um, again you can transpose this second one So, but for now, I'll show you even more. We've got FM. Yeah. Put that back to a sign. You get the idea. All I'm doing is moving the um, FM index. So we have FM. Then we have a ring modulator. But what I'll do is mainly focus on the elements that I use. We also have fractalize. We have sync granular. We have sample, which is in insane. So, you know, this is how you can use this as a sampler. Um, can we switch it to stereo? Doesn't look like it. Um, so you can click here where it says none and then basically pick something this could be a, a break so you should get the idea that's using it as a sampler again this is very brief i'm just showing you this stuff quite quickly also we've got granular so we could slow this right down hang on density you get the idea so just from one oscillator there's just a ton of stuff you can do 
Um, I'm going to just put it on single for now. Then also there's three oscillators, so you can do this three times. And like I say, if you use, say, like a double one, then you've got two waveforms on one. Um, yeah, so there's, it's just, there's, you know, it's limitless, really. There's it's just tons of stuff you can do with this. Um, below the sound wave or wave shape oscillator area, you now have filters, and it has a ton of filters. So you've got just a typical... Let me put on a different sound so we get some top-end fizziness there we go so we have just a low pass filter so if i bring it down there you go you get the idea it takes off all the top end so we have low pass you can click this little arrow here there's all different ones you have all pass and we have high pass filters and we have band pass. We have the cue that you can affect. We also have a notch filter. And all this stuff I'll go through in a minute. Anything that is yellow, so any of the text that is yellow or anything that is yellow, you can modulate. So pretty much everything in Absinthe can be modulated, which is again is crazy. Um, you've got a comb filter. Again, you could modulate that. Make some crazy sounds. You've got super comb. And you've got clouds, which is just nuts. I mean, that just sounds sick already, and I've not done anything. That's just a square wave. That's a pretty badass grime bass sound already we've not really done anything um, then you've got a modulation panel here so at the moment that's on frequency shift you can also um, select a waveform for the frequency shift um, and a lot of this stuff, the way I work with making my own presets and my own sounds is I do what I'm doing now. I literally just click on stuff until it sounds good. Um, I'm not the best person explaining why stuff sounds good or... Yeah. So basically, all I can say is play with it until it sounds good. That's what I kind of do. I will, you know, use some very technical vocabulary when I know it, but a lot of the time I don't for me i'm just going to say click this button move this see what happens so yes we have a modulation area here again you can just use this as another filter area if you wanted you can add a wave shaper which you know could be like a distortion and again you can click on the wave different waveforms some of them are pretty you know gnarly you're not really gonna use them all but again if you just play around with them, you'll find a nice little gem, I'm sure. And then down here, we have more filters for the master section. So you've got a wave shaper already here. But again, like all of these filters above, you don't need to use it as a wave shaper. That's just telling you what it is at the moment. So you can just click on wave shape. And again, you've got all of your filters here you can select. So you don't need to use this as a wave shaper. I could put a low pass filter. <laughs> the idea like I said we've got all of the same filters we had up above here so already you can see there's so much potential to manipulate these sounds we have another filter section here so we can add yet another filter see I could put a wave shaper here instead if you don't want it to be too extreme you can um, turn down the input gain Again, because this is yellow, we can automate and modulate this. Um, and then over here we have our effects section. You click effects. At the moment this is set to multi-comb. You have parameters. So if I click parameters, it will bring us to the effects section, which is up the top here. And at the top here we've got browse. We have perform. We have patches, which is the area where we actually make our sounds. Then we have effects, which is where we've just linked to. 
And here are all our different effects. Now this thing here is insane. This is a new feature for um, Absinthe, I believe. Like I, I think it might come in a few years ago now. <laughs> But with this, you can pitch it up and down. You can switch it to random. You can put a filter. And you can actually tune this. So you've got chromatic. So again, we've gone to an effects panel. I mean, look at all this. There's just so much stuff you can, you can play around with. Um, and you've got a resonator. So yeah, it's insane. Echoes. You can add as many of these as you like. Give them different uh, parameters. Time. Multi-tap. get the idea so um, I mean that sounds decent already and we've not done a lot um, now like any synthesizer you know you can make sounds that aren't impressive <laughs> it's easy to do it's harder to make impressive ones but once you just have a few little tricks on your sleeve like I'm gonna show you uh, you'll you'll work it out and you'll be flying in no time um, so we've got multi multi comb I think we did that already and pipe which is like a, a panna so <laughs> Like I said before, anything that is yellow, we can modulate. So we can modulate this and have stuff panning left and right, all sorts. So it's a crazy synth. So now if we click back to patches, we can turn that effect off by clicking effect or the little frame around effect. And we're back to our nasty bass. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep this short. Um, so modulation, let's go to modulation. Um, I'll try and explain it by showing you uh, Massive. Well, hey, hello, uh, Massive. Right, let's go over here. So this is Massive. Now, anyone who knows how to use Massive knows that modulation is pretty simple. So down here you've got LFOs, you've got a performance, you've got a step sequencer. All we do in here is we click our little arrow and we put it on what we want to modulate. So we could say wave position and then we click and drag to say how much and then we can turn up the rate you get the idea now you can do it that's really simple and you can do it just as easily in absinthe the reason i'm comparing them is because i think people look at absinthe and go, oh my god like it looks so complicated how am i going to do this I'm going to show you how easy it is. So anything that is yellow, as I explained before, can be modulated. So all you have to do on a PC is right click. Um, I'm sure it's just as easy as that in um, on a Mac. So anyway, if we come down to filter. And now the way I decide what I want to modulate is I move parameters around. Like that, and I might go, oh, wow, that sounds wicked moving. So I'm going to modulate that. So what we do is we right click, and then you come up with all these different parameters, loads. Now I go to create new envelope. Boom. It's now switched us to the envelope window. So we were in patch window, we're now in envelope window. Wicked. And this is the envelope it's just created. At the moment, it's not doing anything, it's just a straight line. Now the power of this is we can just draw whatever the hell we want. We can keep adding points, as many points as we like. I'll give you an idea. So here we go. We can add a few more, make it just do loads of crazy pops and shifts and stuff. So we go. Oh yeah, and if we click grid, then see if we don't have grid clicked on we don't know if we're in time with our door if we put grid on there then we know it's going to be in time with um the te you know be in sync with the tempo of our project i'm just going to add some more of these just to show you 
So we haven't done a lot already and we've got quite a decent sound. So again, I'm modulating the filter on the master. But we could modulate this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I quite like that. So let's modulate this. So if I right click, create new envelope. Now also with the envelopes, you can there's so many different things you can do. See at the moment it's on sustain mode. But you could have it on loop mode, and wherever you see these two little red dots here, that is what's going to loop. Get the idea. So we've got loop, we've got re trigger. So if we don't have it on re trigger, it won't. You know, when we press a new note, it's always going to start from the beginning. If we had it on sustain, it might not always start at the beginning. Again, please forgive my technical ability. Um, a lot of this with me is trial and error. So I'm just trying to make this as easy as possible for you to understand as quickly as possible. Right, so yes, envelopes, you get the idea. Now, here shows all of the envelopes we have. Now, when we first start off, it already has an envelope for the oscillator, amplifier for A, B, and C. So A, B, and C, go back to envelopes. And we've added a, a modulator for a filter, A, that's on the A um, oscillator, and a filter on the master channel. Now we can do even more crazy, crazy stuff with these envelopes. We can come over to transform. We could do load envelope template and we could just do a ramp down. We could do ramp fast, weird, whatever this is. So it's just all over the place, release and trigger. So when I let go, it's opening up the filter. Rhythmic 16s. So let's say we selected this and we like that. Then we could go, we could pick even more load envelope. Let's go for rhythmic triple. And we've even got step sequences. Here we are. Let's do 16, so it'll be more fun. Here we are. Boom, boom, boom. So this would be really good if you wanted to create like a, a rhythm with a bass sound or a rhythm with anything that you created in Absinthe. And because we've got it uh, on grid mode and we've got it synced, it will fit with, um, you know, the tempo of your track. You can also change each one of these by using the Hertz section up here. And now you can also copy and paste envelopes. So we can go, we can, you could think, I really, really love this envelope. So we come over to file. Do, 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 do. No, we don't. We come over here. How do we copy and paste these? Edit. Yeah, copy envelope. And now I think that would sound wicked on the on the pitch so we can now make this like an arpeggiator so if I click here create new envelope we're back over we've just created this pitch envelope that I showed you it's flat as they are now I can do paste and there we are Again, at the moment, I'm not trying to make amazing sounds to blow your mind. I'm just showing you how to use the synthesizer to kind of open your mind as to, oh my God, if I was applying this to mental bass sounds, imagine what I can do. And there is a lot you can do. Right. What am I doing now? I'm losing my train of thought here. Okay. 
So envelopes. I think we've had enough, you know, enough time looking at envelopes. Um, back over to here. So if I turn this off, let's just imagine we're starting again. So if we come over to again a wave shape, we can actually draw our own wave shapes. So I could click. So I've just I've just gone over here. Hang on, I'll put it on single. Yeah, so we've got a single waveform. Click on sign, and here you've got new. And now here, we can make our own wave shape. And if you loved it so much, you can save it. And then load it in. And you've also got a spectrum section. So, like I say, there's so much you can do. Transform, shift harmonics, I don't know. Shift harmonics, we can bring them down again. So you can see I'm doing this really quickly just to show you. Again, you could save this. I'm gonna call it Billy. Hello, Billy. Probably, let me see if we can do that. Can we load it in there? All right, well, it's not in there, but um, I know you can do that. So, oh, God, there's so much to cover. Okay, so just a normal wave shape like before, but I've picked a, let's do a smooth square again. But now we can also go to morph waves. And you've got library waves. So there's tons of stuff you can do. Um, one more thing we should look at very quickly. Let's just go new sound. Okay, let's quickly get, um, let's do a square. Let's have a sub. I'm just going to try and make something very quickly. Right, so we've also got a unison section here. So like I said, those envelopes you can add to anything that's got yellow text on or is yellow. So turns the stuff. Uh, let's talk about LFOs. Hey. So now we've got an LFO section. Um, mm -hmm. So at the moment we've just got a sine wave. If I put it on beats. It will now be synced to our DAW. So this will now be working on all of the oscillators, okay? Because that's what this means. If I see it says oscillator, if I turn these off, it wouldn't affect any of them. And now I'm selecting which ones to affect. Hang on, so I've got, yeah, so I've got A and B on. So if I turn this up. So there we go. It's modulating the pitch. Okay, and you can invert that by clicking this little button here. This little boy here tells you if it's going to work uh, kind of like uh, on everything at once or everything individually. So when it's these little three arrows, that means it's going to work on all of the oscillators individually. And then this means it's like them all being sent to one channel, say, and then they're being affected. We have this thing here with the little arrows on, all going into one arrow. 
Now, we've also got the sine wave at the moment that we're using as the LFO shape, but we can pick anything. So here we are. Actually, if I slow this down, it'll probably hear it better. So that's a square wave. Triangle. And like I said, by clicking these, you can tell it which, you know, oscillators you want it to work on. So I could turn A off. So it's keeping the square wave unmodulated. Hang on. Um, and then we can also pick what else we want it to modulate. So we could click filter frequency. I don't know if I've got any filters in there. No, so I could put a filter. All right, now let me see. LFO. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. There we are, filter frequency. Do you get the idea? Um, and it's endless, and that's only one LFO, so there's two more. Um, you can also go down to controls. Again, I'm trying to cover as much of this as possible in as little time, there is loads, so there may be additional videos going really deep into the sampler and into other aspects. Um, so that's a very brief look at LFOs. So we could modulate the, um, the timing if we really wanted to. We could modulate the phase, the pitch, um, so another way to add an envelope as well is rather than right clicking on the yellow area you can go to envelope you can go new and then you can look for um the parameter you want to modulate so i could go filter a and this is frequency resonation resonation or resonance so i can click ok it's not really going to do that much, but um, that's another way to um, create an envelope. Um, mm, 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 mm. We could have a very, very quick look at samples. So I've just got a new sound. Right, go to main. Let's turn it to a sample. Okay, did I just do that right? Oh, yeah, sample, none. Let's pick some sounds I've made then. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Samples, 2016 sounds, loops, what's this? So there you go, we've loaded in a drum loop I've made. Now this is, you can pick where it starts. Let's just pick a different one. There you go. So that's just a drum loop I've made. Now this will blow your mind. Well it might not, but I, I think it's pretty impressive. If we come over now to our envelopes and we click new, we can now go oscillator A, where our sample is, and do sample jump. Check this out. We have now got our audio here. So we can see exactly what we're doing. We can sync it with the beat. We can add as many of these little steps as we like. But even more crazy is we can actually scroll through our audio like this to make our own beat. So I can go. So I could scroll it again, we'll go. I'll add another one. Again, get it on, on the grid. Let's get this one on the grid. Hang on, what's in there? Oops. Add 
another one. Let's have a little bit of silence there. Well, you get the idea. Has it played up higher? So yeah, pretty powerful. I mean, you could put anything in there. You could put in a bass line that you've made and resample it, have it in here, chop it up, make something crazy. Um, I could do that now. Give you just a little idea. 2,000,000 samples, mad loops. Yeah, what's this? So again, we go to envelope. There we are. We've got a sound here. So yeah, it, there's loads of stuff you can do in Absinthe. It is insane. Um, I recommend you spend some time just playing around with it, like I've just done. Um, I might do additional videos just going a bit deeper into the synth to show you what to what you can do. Um, I'll just show you um, some of the sounds I've made using uh, yeah using Absinthe. <laughs> Always do a tutorial taking some of these apart. Um, and all of these presets I'm just going through very quickly are going to be for sale. Um, I've made a expansion pack that you can buy and load in yourself and use all these sounds in your own tunes. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, don't sleep on Absinthe. It's such a powerful, powerful synth. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, I'll stop playing all these. But um, yes, please let me know if this video has been helpful, whether it's made you decide you want to give Absinthe a go. It really is powerful, I mean, especially once you get into the sampling. Um, I'll do another video showing you how you can record audio as well. So I could just hold this down, for example, and then Absinthe will record that and store that as a, uh, a wave, and then you can bring it back in, and then you're resampling. So, you know, it is just, it's just, you know, insane. Once you start looking at this as a, a sampler, and a synthesizer, you know, FM synthesizer, um, the way you can modulate so much of it. I mean, I haven't even looked at the effects. The effects in this are insane. And you can also use this as an effect plugin. So you could be making a tune with vocals in, or basses in, or guitars, whatever, and put this in your channel as an effect. So again, if there's anything that I've mentioned that I haven't gone in deep enough, you'd like me to look at again, going deeper, just let me know below, leave a comment. Um, like I said, these this preset pack I'm making or have made will be available on my Bandcamp page. I will put a link to that underneath this video. And yeah, I hope this has helped. I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. And if there is anything you want me to cover in regards to production or mixing, let me know. Till next time.